In this video we're going to show you the process of creating a high quality 3D model in detail and how to export in Agisoft Metashape. Assuming we have already added our photos to the model, we will then begin the photo alignment. So the first parameters we can adjust in the photo alignment window is the accuracy. With the accuracy we have five options. Each of the options are multiplied by a factor of four. Highest is increased by a factor of four resolution, with high being default. Medium is reduced by a factor of 4 resolution. Low is reduced by a factor of 16 resolution. And lowest is reduced by a factor of 64 resolution. In this example, we're going to leave the accuracy on the highest setting. The next options available in the photo alignment section are generic pre-selection and reference pre-selection. Generic pre-selection is an option that can be used to pre-scan the photos to check for images that overlap from those that do not. And so if generic pre-scan does not detect common photos, then Metashape will not spend time on comparing them. In situations of large data, this can generally save lots of time, but with smaller data sets, it could generally take a bit more time plus RAM. And reference pre-selection is similar to generic pre-selection, but it uses the geotagging GPS locations of your photos, which will definitely speed the alignment process up, especially for large data sets. The next parameters to be adjusted are the key point limit and the tie point alignment. The key point limit is the number of points Metashape will extract from each photograph. By default, the software recommends a key point limit of 40,000. You can also leave this option at zero, and then there is no limit. The next part of the photo splicing is carried out by the tie point limit. This is the amount of matching points that the software identifies in each photograph. And by default, the tie point limit is set to 1,000. This means that out of every 40,000 key points per photograph, the best matching 1,000 are selected and used as tie points. The next checkbox is the adaptive camera model fitting. When this option is left unchecked, Metashape will refine only the minimal fixed camera parameters such as focal length, principal point position, three radial distortion coefficients K1, K2 and K3, and two tangential distortion coefficients. Leaving this option unchecked is okay for a standard aerial survey with less geometry. However, if you have a survey with more geometry, then checking this option will produce better results as it adjusts extra parameters. Now we can optimize the camera alignment. Optimization of cameras should be performed before building a dense cloud or a mesh, otherwise the dense cloud will be discarded. You should select camera parameters based on the camera type used. This is listed in more detail in the Agisoft manual. You can add more parameters or alternatively you can select the adaptive camera model fitting option which enables automatic selection of camera parameters to be included into adjustment based on their reliability estimates. Once cameras are optimized, you can then position the bounding box and resize to further isolate your model for processing. You may have to play around here with various views in order to contain the points you wish Metashape to process. You can also change the script HTML of the bounding box to resize it automatically. This can be achieved by going to Tools and running the script. This step is important because it can dramatically speed up your processing time. Now that the photos are all aligned and cameras optimized, the workflow process can continue. The next model that needs to be created is the dense cloud. The first setting in the dense cloud tab is the option to choose a quality setting. 
As a default, MetaShape should be used on ultra high setting for a ratio of 1 to 1 quality processing. The quality is then further reduced by a factor of 2 or halved for every other reduced setting. As an example of the dense cloud quality setting, if ultra high produces 1 million points, then high will produce 500,000 points. The other ratios are given as high 1 to 2, medium 1 to 4, low 1 to 8, and lowest would be 1 to 16. The next option that can be selected in the Dense Cloud tab is the Depth Filtering option. This option, if set to aggressive, being the highest, will filter or remove most of the points which do not appear to be connected to a main surface. This should generally be set to the lowest setting of mild unless you want to filter away things like leaves or plants, etc. Another option in this tab is to check the Reuse Depth Maps option. Depth maps can be reused for the dense cloud generation operation. However, Agisoft states that if there are less than 100 common valid tie points between two images, then the depth map will not be generated for them and this option will sometimes be blanked out. And the last option here is the Calculate Point Colors. This option can be unchecked in case the point color is not of interest. This will allow to speed up processing time. The final model to build for export is the tiled model. The tiled model will give you the final result with the best quality. This step will take quite a bit of time probably a few hours at least, during which your computer will be unusable. The tiled model will produce a detailed textured mesh from the dense cloud. Agisoft recommends creating tiled models for city scale modeling projects. The first option here is the source data. Choosing the depth maps here is recommended for large projects when build mesh procedure is not feasible due to processing time and result management issues. Using the dense cloud is sufficient for this project. With the pixel size, the options here are calculated and given automatically. For the tile size, Agisoft recommends faster visualization for a smaller tile size. The face count specifies the maximum number of polygons in the final model. For the purpose of the dense cloud processing, this is calculated based on the number of points in the dense cloud. Ratios here are high, 1 to 5, medium, 1 to 15, and low, 1 to 45 respectively. The ghost filtering option can be checked and used to filter out any objects contained in the model which are moving, or thin structures, i.e. vehicles. So as you can see the final product is now ready to export. To export, just go to File, Upload, and you'll see the options to export your model. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for listening.